we're still here. <laughs> we left last week that Noah was building the ark. He spent a hundred years building the ark, so we gave him a week. Uh, and he got it finished. And there came a point when God said, it's time to load up because it's fixing to rain. Now, it had never rained before. The Bible tells us that uh, a mist came up from the ground and there were natural springs that came up. And that's what watered uh, the earth at the time. It had never rained yet, according to the Bible. And, uh, but God told, God told Noah, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna rain. So it's time to load up. And God sent the animals to Noah. Uh, according to the Bible, he, uh, he told the animals, go to the ark. And uh, the, uh, that must have been something to see. Imagine being Noah's neighbors and just watching the various animals come parading down the street and get in the ark and go to their place. And, and the body of those animals probably didn't know what was. They might not have known what all the animals were. Just these strange creatures coming, marching through the town. The Bible says um, there were two of the unclean animals and seven of each of the clean animals, which are the ones that we eat, are the clean animals. And uh, <coughs> they all got on the ark. God told Noah, you get you and your family in the ark. And they did. So we'll take them down because they're not here anymore. They're in the ark. And all the animals were in the ark. So we'll load them all up. Here's our Noah over here. Okay, all the animals were in the ark. And God shut the door of the ark. Noah didn't. I kind of think Noah was hoping more people would come get on board with him and his family, but no one else came. Just him and his three sons and their wives. So there were eight people on the ark and it began to rain and I don't think it was a little rain or even the harder rain like we had this morning at our house I, I think it was a torrential downpour uh, that began to rain How long would it take for rain to actually fill up the whole time? The Bible says it rained for 40 days and 40 nights that would do it so a torrential downpour for 40 days and 40 nights, and pretty soon all of the trees were covered, and all the lowlands were covered, and the Bible says, okay, so were the major prophets, the Bible says that even the tops of the tallest mountains were covered. And it gives us a measurement, we think that Noah and his family must have taken a sounding from the bottom of the ark, and they can tell by the sound and the echoing um, how far, how deep the water is. And the Bible says that it was at least, and it just left my brain, at least 200 feet, I believe it was. Um, the, they probably can't sound any deeper than that. So water covered everything, the high mountains, everything. And they floated. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And then it did quit raining. The Bible says also that God opened the fountains of the deep, which sounds like there were a great many geysers that opened up to help add to the water. <laughs> well, God needed it. He wanted to wash everything. <laughs> um, the rain quit after 40 days and 40 nights. And the water was still there though. It takes water a while to go away. In fact, the Bible tells us that Noah was on the ark for about a year, a little bit more than a year. Uh, they were on the ark. Finally, they had one window in the ark and finally they could see the tops of mountains. And then the Bible says God sent a wind, and he sent them to Mount Ararat. And the ark rested on Ararat. Ararat is right here. And for perspective, this is the Black Sea. This is the Mediterranean Sea. This is Israel here. And this is Turkey. 
So to give you a perspective, this is Greece and that's Italy. Um, so Aurora is here. The Tigris and Euphrates rivers are right here. So God had the ark land in these well, the Bible tells us it was Mount Ararat. Now, whether we are still calling the mountain we call Ararat today is the same Ararat, we don't know absolutely for sure, but there is some evidence that it is. There's something. There's big, something up there. There's big. There's something really big and wooden up there. Yeah, and the government of Turkey does not believe in God, and so they won't let anyone go look for it. Um, but God had them put in the place where, after the floodwaters left, uh, they would be right by one of the most fertile places on planet Earth. We call this the Fertile Crescent, here between the Tigris and Euphrates River. Um, the ark came to rest, but there was still a lot of water. So Noah sent out a raven, and the raven just flew around and it, it just it didn't do anything. He sent out a dove, and the dove flew around for a while and came back to the ark. So he waited for a week, and he sent out another dove. This one came back to the ark, but she brought an olive twig in her mouth. That meant there was something growing out there. So he waited another week, and he sent the dove out again, and she didn't come back. So she found food and places to nest. She didn't need him anymore. So he knew that everything was dried up and they could get off the ark. And uh, they opened the door and they all left the ark. And then they held a sacrifice, one of each clean animal. Um, they sacrificed on the ark as a thanksgiving to God for saving their lives and bringing them through the whole flood. Okay, let's sing our song today. This is kind of a long song, but it's the only story we get to sing it with. The Lord told Noah there's going to be a floody, floody. The Lord told Noah there's going to be a 